Welcome to all viewers in attendance today. My name is Denny Hirsch from the class of 64. I'm playing the role of O.H. Bennett, who in 1923 was the Hamilton County Superintendent of Education. He was also the Master of Ceremonies for the September 30th, 1923 Lane of the Cornerstone, hence I'm the Master of Ceremonies. Because there are so many people who have made this day possible, and because I might miss someone, I would just like to collectively thank all of you. And a special thanks to Greg Stanley from the class of 75, who's the director. And he put together the PowerPoints. There's two PowerPoints we think you're going to enjoy. Uh, a Century Celebration Committee was formed several months ago. I just wanted to take a moment to mention some of the activities our committee has accomplished and some yet to come. We had a successful kickoff event at Corrine High in August. I know most of you have seen the banners along the driveway at Coleraine High and along Poole and Springdale Road. The senior class has sold 100-year t-shirts and we are selling yard signs, which are down here. Um, the yard signs profits and donations will help pay for nine $1,000 scholarships we hope to award this spring. Details about the scholarships are on the back of the uh, program. Uh, as the, let me see, as the sports seasons continue, we will, be, we will be announcing all century teams for each sport. In the spring, we are planning a gala featuring Carrie Combs as our guest speaker. Carrie is an assistant University of Cincinnati football coach and a 1979 CHS grad. We will have an open house at present day Colvin High School in the spring. Okay, at one of the first meetings, I shared a copy of the original Cornerstone Lane program on Sunday, September 30th, 1923. Someone suggested it would be a neat idea to reenact that program as part of our 100 year celebration. As more and more people heard about our reenactment from as far away as Boston, New York, and North Carolina, ideas like the oldest living graduate, antique cars, first diplomas, flapper girls, they were all added. We noticed there was a lot of music in the 23 program, so we involved the Coleraine High School Band and the Coleraine Elementary and Coleraine Middle School choirs. Along the way, we even found out some of the wives of some of our past administrators were still alive, and they became a part of the program. We also found out that a present Coleraine JV cheerleader was a member of a five-generation Coleraine family, and her mother and great-grandmother were also Coleraine cheerleaders. Finally, since all the original participants from the 1923 have passed away, we reached out to some present-day CH people and relatives to play the roles of those original people. So, that's kind of an introduction. Uh, I went online, and if it was September 30th, 1923, for some trivia, uh, the high was 71, the low was 53, there was no rain. On Sunday, September 30th, the Cardinals beat the Reds 8 to 5. And so the Cardinals are playing the Reds today. It would really be interesting if the score turned out to be 8 to 5. Yeah, I'm sorry I interrupted the Bengals today. We, we figured it was no good day to do this on. Somebody would be have a conflict. There were no Cincinnati Bengals in 1923, but there were the Columbus Tigers. Um, and they beat the, I'm sorry, there was the Dayton Triangles defeated the Columbus Tigers 7-6. to six. On Saturday, September 29th, for you UC football fans, UC defeated Kentucky Wesleyan 17 to nothing. If you're a Miami of Ohio fan, they defeated Georgetown 22 to nothing. And I told Colin Clymer this, Ohio State didn't play. You opened up the next week by defeating Ohio Wesleyan 24-7. The best picture in 1923 was the movie Wings. For you trivia fans out there, this was the only silent movie to receive the honor of the best picture of the year. However, the highest grossing movie was The Ten Commandments, made $4 million. Uh, the top four songs were The Parade of the Wooden Soldier, Swinging Down the Lane, That Old Gang of Mine, and the ever popular Yes, We Have No Bananas. And more importantly, on Friday, December 7th, 2023, 
The Coleraine High, old round top school, was sometimes referred to as Coleraine High. Never was a four, never had a uh, four years to it. They defeated Miami Town two to one to win the uh, 19 or 2023 county soccer championship. Okay, Greg, um, where are we at? Okay, and uh, I gotta look at these slides as I'm narrating this a little bit. So that's the Enquirer back in 2023. Then there was an article, uh, the one that you see on your right, that was written in the Enquirer describing what happened on the day they laid the cornerstone. And much of the history uh, was taken from that article in the Cincinnati en Enquirer. The article mentioned what had happened on Sunday, September 30th, 1923, and mentioned that Coleraine was the first centralized school in Hamilton County. It was an epic event in rural education, and also says 4,000 people attended. I got looked at the 2000 uh, uh, or 1920 census. There were only 2,700 people lived in Coleraine Township. Uh, now there could have been 4,000 people here but I think the guy might have embellished a little bit. And by the way, where you're sitting was not a part of the original school. The original school really just started out by Poole and Springdale and went that way. This was added in 1948 when they also expanded the gym over Coleraine Middle School to its present size, all right? So uh, one of the thoughts when I had doing all this, I was thinking to myself, um, I don't want to steal somebody's thunder, but they did have a gym and an auditorium up on the third floor in the original school. But I would suspect that the original Cornerstone program probably had to be outside. So that, again, I couldn't envision 4,000 people being out by Coleraine and Springdale. Okay. Um, all right, well then there, there's this, here's some slides we thought you'd find. For you old timers, there's Pickens back in the 30s. Uh, and that middle one down at the bottom, if you were coming down Pool Road towards the school, that was in the 1930s. And then there's the original school in 1924. Greg, are we ready for those? Okay. Um, wherever the, um, where's Aaron? Tell the band to come in. Or the end. Okay. Hey, we're going to start this. We're kind of... Uh, following the old program, we're going to start with the uh, marching bands play playing the national anthem. So if you all want to kind of see, they're all coming in. And then the cheerleaders, where are the cheerleaders? One, uh, cheerleaders are kind of speed things up. Why don't you all come down here and get on the stage? So bear with us a moment as the band filters in. Hey, just come on across. Okay. Is, let me see. All right, all right. Are we ready? Check be ready. Okay. As I said, this is somewhat unrehearsed, so we're. Jacob Page is our band director here, and he is making his way up here. Are you? And we have all our cheerleaders up here. This is Jacob Page. Um, okay.
Okay. If y'all want to stay, um, if y'all want to stand up, we are now going to play. Uh, Jacob, do you need to direct us too? Or? Oh, there are there. Okay. We're, go we're going to do the fight song, so go ahead. Olivia, come on, come up to the front there. All right, Greg, are we ready? Hey, cheerleaders, now let her come, come this way and go that way so we can, you don't put the screws. You just want me to announce her? Okay. All right. The young lady in front of you's name is Olivia Lighthall. As we got in doing this, we found out we thought some really interesting things. Olivia's mother, uh, okay, let me see. You want to do the cheer? Hey, Greg, put the cheerleaders back on there. Okay, that's a, this is Olivia, so she's that one in the front on the left. Her mom, which is down, she's the one on your right, uh, Megan Seavers, that was her mom. And the ladies over on the left um, graduated in 1949. Her name was Helcher Hine, but she was a cheerleader for Corwin in 47. This young lady was not a bad cheerleader and had to wear a different uniform. She is actually wearing her great-grandma's cheerleading outfit. So there. All right. We thought that was pretty neat. We'd get a kick out of that. Okay. Um, and although we found out there were five and six generation Colerain families, and, we, and there were probably two numbers, you put them all up here. Uh, Megan's family, the one in the middle, Irvin Helcher and Ellen Jutsey, graduated from Old Round Top School. Their daughter was Thelma Helcher Hine. Then Thelma Helcher Hine had Sandy Hine from the class of 68, who had Megan up there who graduated in 96, and Olivia in 76. So she is actually a fifth generation when you go back to one of the one and two room schools, I have no doubt like uh, the Husses and so on, probably they go back even earlier than that. But we thought, where's Megan at? Megan, put your hand up, put it up higher than that, okay? But at any rate, that's a five generation Colerain family. Okay. The oldest graduates. Uh, Greg, is, is Maxine here? Oh, there she is. Sorry. Okay. Okay. The uh, one thing that came into being, we thought, well, let's try to find the oldest living graduate, all right? I will tell you right now, there is not a book in the library that tells you who the oldest living Colerain graduate is. Actually, Maggie Trumbull over here, who's the pastor, not yet, Maggie? Oh, just stand up. Okay, that's fine. At Prince of Peace, there were two churches involved in the original program. Prince of Peace out on Old Colerain was one of them. Went out there and we were talking to them and their secretary said, we told we're trying to find the oldest living graduate. And she said, well, you know, Marion Herman Taylor went to Colerain and I kind of knew the Taylor family and I knew she graduated in 1941, all right? So we thought all along uh, that she was the oldest living graduate. The lady next door to me cuts my hair. I was telling her about this program, and she said, well, my ex-mother-in-law went to Colerain and graduated, and I said, yeah. I knew Marion was about 100. I said, how old is she, and she's still alive? She says, 
she's still alive and she's 101. I'm saying to myself, hmm, Marion is going to have to become the second oldest living graduate. The title belongs to, to the best of our knowledge, to a lady named, her maiden name was Virginia Risch. Her married name is Fleming, not doing well. She lives in a nursing home down in Florida where her son and her have relocated. Okay, Greg? We also thought this was interesting. That's, um, that's Con Connie, where are you at? Yeah, stand up. This is, that's her back in high school. We got all these high school pictures of you, not the current one. We thought those would be better. So that's Connie Taylor. Uh, that's Marion. She is still alive at a nursing home, Ma Maple Knoll, over on Springfield Pike. That's her husband, Gene, who's a member of the Athletic Hall of Fame. That's her mom back in high school in 1941. That was the first year they had yearbooks, 1941. And that was her father, or uh, her grandpa, Harry Taylor. Now, the reason I'm mentioning all this to you, uh, Harry Taylor, when we show you all these old pictures of the teams and graduating classes, you'll see Struble and Harry Taylor. They were the principals, the superintendents, the coaches, the teachers, they did everything, all right? Harry Taylor died suddenly in 1948. His visitation was actually in this building. So his coffin or his visitation was between the stage and those front seats. So we, again, we thought that was kind of an interesting. How many people know that there was, this was at one point served as a funeral home? So anyway, that was Harry Taylor. Okay, great, all right. There's Maxine. Uh, Gail, Maxine, as we got into this, <laughs> as we got into this, it's like, it's like a life of its own, all right? And I want to get to Mrs. Hammond here in a moment. Maxine, turn around. Maxine's 102. Okay. Maxine was married to Everett Welsh. Everett Welsh was a former uh, Welsh Elementary. It's named after Everett Welsh. Everett Welsh was a teacher, a coach, and later an administrator for Northwest Schools. So we thought we wanted to give Maxine to be recognized being 102. Okay? Greg, go to the next one. So then we find out, I'm talking to Connie. Connie says to me, well, you know, my mom's at Maple Knoll, but Mrs. Hammond. Now, for those of you, again, you're older, uh, Ed Hammond, Mr. Hammond, was a teacher, uh, a principal. He was a principal when I was in high school, and he later became superintendent. She says to me, you know his wife, Gray Hammond, is alive. She's 109. <laughs> okay? She's still alive at the same nursing home where Connie's mom is. All right? I, I did forget to mention, Maxine used to be a librarian at Coleraine Elementary, and Mrs. Hammond used to teach in this building, okay? But we thought that was kind of worth mentioning that some of our former administrator's wives are still kicking. Now let me get, Greg, where, where are, um, where's the girls from 2024 with the, um, okay, we want to give some shirts to Mrs. Welsh, and we're going to give about three of them to Connie over there for herself, and for her mom and Mrs. Hammond. So, girls, this is, um, where are they at? That's Lydia Manus and uh, Ava Detzel and Claire Stamper. Okay, but we'll give them honorary shirts. I think they deserve it, being 109, I guess we can give them a t-shirt. Okay, Ava. Ava, you're Ava. Stop there for a moment. Y'all three, you can stop. Ava, turn around. What a great weekend for Ava. Homecoming was Friday night. Ava's the one on my right. She was the football homecoming queen this year. And got to be a flapper girl at the reenactment ceremony. Now, you can't get it much better than that. And the, the Claire... 
And the, lady, the young lady next to her, matter of fact, was Claire Stamper. These are, they're all class officers for 2024. So, okay, another thing. Thank you. Okay, um, and again, rambling on here, founding, all oh, the founding families. Okay. So we made a determined effort to reach out to all these people who had relatives that graduated between 1925 and the Second World War. As I read your name, I'm, and I'm probably going to miss some people, just stand up. That's all you got to do. And you're representing people from back in the 20s and the 30s. So some, Jerry, if you want to stand up. Jerry Shearing, stand up. Jeff, you and Ed, stand up. Cyber, Ruthie, where's Ruthie? Ruthie, stand up. Uh, the Brestles, okay. Uh, Janet Lockwood, some of you have seen. Janet, stand up wherever you're at. Okay. Um, Susan Le Molenhart LaFerry and Aaron Davis, wherever Susan, there's Susan down there. A bunch of Molenharts. Uh, I did not see Dave and Lana Aston. I don't know if they're here or not. Pat Disler and Doug, where's Doug Disler? Doug, stand up. And Pat, if Pat Disler is here, a lot of Disler's, they go way back too. Um, Joanne Trader Bertram, where's Joanne, one of the flapper girls, stand up. One of our 65 grads with a flapper girl right there. Uh, and Megan, we mentioned you. Is Don Boris here? Don, stand up. Don's family goes back to the 30s. Is, did Richard Underwood make it? That was an iffy, okay. Um, the Beavis Schoolhouse, which is still a house, Mary told me this, Mary, are they here? I don't know. Okay. Are the people who now reside in the previous Beavis schoolhouse, are you here? Well, there you are. Stand up. These people, when you see pictures of old Beavis school, they live in that building. Still there. Um, okay. We did the flapper girls class. Oh, Lily DeBold. Where's Lily at? Oh, she left. Okay, never mind. All right, and then Len Grace, Len stand up, his family goes back. Arliss Herman Bell, where's Arliss? Len stand up, Arliss, used to commute to Miami with her, she's there. Uh, Sharon Thiemann Siller, where's Jean and Sharon? I saw them, okay, they go way back. Okay, Greg, are we ready to move on to the next thing then? Oh, Danny Huss, for God's sakes, where's, where's Dan Huss at? Put that stovepipe hat on. Okay. Dan Huss, 57. He's on our committee. Okay. All right. This was the first graduating class from 1925. Dan's mom, from where you're sitting, is the one on the left. Lorraine Crass was her name. Okay. The little fellow next to Struble on the right was Robert Foster. All right. When we got into this, Bobby Foster, who graduated in 58, she actually runs a talk show up in Boston. She actually invited me to come to Boston to be on the radio show. <laughs> However, I said I can't make it, okay? But at any rate, she's the one, well, we had this picture, so Greg, go on to the next one. And the other thing we thought, this was her dad, Robert Foster's, the diploma they gave out in 1925. So again, we've, some of these things, we just thought you would get a kick out of seeing, but that was the first diploma given to the first nine graduates. Okay, now, the Board of Education back then. Um, we tracked down three of them, we didn't know what the other one was, and then today, his uh, granddaughter showed up, so we're gonna recognize her, all right? So the first, the, the president of the Board of Education back then was Chris Reel. Jenny, you want to stand up? There's John. John, put your hand up. That was John's grandpa. That was Jenny Real Etler's great grandpa. So they're representing him. Okay, Greg. Jerry Shearing. Jerry, stand up again. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, uh, Jerry told me the Shearings moved out to Coleraine Township back in the 1840s. He had 12 kids, a bunch of Shearings all over the country. Actually, I, David is an uncle to Jerry, but he is representing all the Shearings. Cyber, 
Uh, Jeff, is Ed here? Is your brother here too? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Stand up. Okay. Uh, another member of the Board of Education was Chris Seibert, and they had uh, two of their grandsons, Ed from his class of 73 and Jeff from 76. They're representing their grandpa. Um, hey, Jeff, the, I hope I got this right. So we thought that's all we found out. Well, a lady named uh, Vote Jacob. Where is she at? There you are. Stand up. There were two other people on the Board of Education, Rutz and Schreiner, and we didn't find anything about them until today. As the program starts, Vote Jacob's grandpa was Jacob Rutz. So we didn't have any pictures of them. She says she'll send us some pictures, but at any rate, we just wanted to recognize another one, the, grandpa, the granddaughter of another one of the board members. Okay, great. Okay, and, that, oh, and then Bobby Foster is a girl from 58. The guy who was the clerk was a guy named George Foster, and that was her grandpa, so she sent his picture. All right, now we're going to go into, we got about a 10-minute PowerPoint presentation. It has some generic slides from the 20s, has some of the old one- and two-room schools, some of the athletic teams, and the graduating classes. So go ahead, Greg. <laughs>
This next is really the reenactment program. So we have Maggie Trumbull. She is the pastor of Prince of Peace, and she is, I can't see her there. So their, their church used to be the Beavis United Brethren Church. That was the reverend who was there about 100 years ago. And this is Maggie. She's going to say an invocation, OK? Of course, then, uh, there was always that uh, opportunity to offer a prayer. But if we just take this time right now in a moment of silence in remembrance of that very day. History is wonderful, isn't it? 
We have seen some beautiful faces and many grandparents and loved ones uh, over the years. And so this day is a great celebration, remembering our history and where it all began. And we all can thank the one who made that special. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right. Next up, the guy that built the school way back then. Colin, come on up. The Honorable uh, George Barkman was the architect. Colin Clymer is the principal of Corbin Elementary. So he's going to talk about what the original school had and didn't have. So here's Colin Clymer. Good afternoon. Today I have the pleasure to represent George Barkman, the original architect here uh, in creating this building. And in order to prepare for the first day of school here, we have asked fathers of our students to bring their teams of horses and scrapers to help clear the space. We are excited that we also have access to one tractor to help with the project. I would like now to share the details of the building. Students were, uh, will enter the building at the far west entrance, which is currently where our sign is. The building will have a total of nine classrooms. The bottom floor will have two classrooms looking out onto Springdale Road. For those parents and grandparents that, that are in attendance, that's currently our counseling office and classroom number 201. The top floor will have two classrooms looking out to Springdale Road. The main floor, which is what you're sitting in right now, will have five classrooms facing Springdale Road, two facing Springdale Road, and three coming down the hallway, hallway, stopping before you reach our current music room. The auditorium is on the top floor, currently where rooms 303 and 305 are located, and the gymnasium will be across the hallway from the auditorium currently where rooms 304 and 306 are located. For those of you that ever spent time, just so you would know, the principal's office will be located on the third floor, currently to the left of room 301, which is, again, currently our speech pathologist's office. Students and staff will have to use the outhouses since we do not have indoor plumbing. And finally, students and staff will need to pack their lunches since we will not have uh, a lunchroom in the building. Now, on behalf of Cor <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of Corain Elementary, I again want to thank all of you for coming, and I do want to take the time to really thank Denny Hirsch. I've had the great opportunity of talking to Denny Hirsch a lot in the last few months. And the passion that I've seen out of this young man has been uh, just unparalleled. And uh, I'm really, Denny, you just have done a great job. So uh, you know, kudos to you and, and everybody involved. Okay, thank All right, buddy. You. All right, where's this Gail? Oh, there you are. Okay. All right. Uh, moving along. So get, the township had a representative, okay? And Gail Nolte, who's in the class of 75, she is playing the role of the township um, spokesman. So here she is. <laughs> On behalf of the trustees of Colerain Township, welcome to this momentous occasion. What a great turnout. Today we lay the cornerstone that is symbolic of the growth and prosperity of our township. We are building for our future. It's hard to imagine, but we have heard comments from some of you that we'll never be able to fill such a big building. But I'm here to tell you we're ready for growth. We have the wonderful Beavis Tavern and Hotel. We have churches and we have put the centralized school in between our two major roads, 
Coal Rain, and Blue Rock. Also, we know that you all will want to be bringing your students by foot, by truck, or by horseback, and that will allow for all modes of transportation. As we educate more and more students, we prepare for progress. I want to assure you, we will still observe the practice of not having school during planting and harvest season. Our township is growing, and I know many will say too fast. We, your trustees, see a future that's bright. We live on the outskirts of the bursting city of Cincinnati that is now has over 400,000 people and is 16th in the United States as the biggest cities. What this means to us is that more people will come out to the Northwest area to our 883 acres of rolling hills. And now we have this modern school, the first rural centralized school in Hamilton County. As we move forward, we see a glorious future as we commit to engaging our residents, businesses, and visitors to create a vibrant and safe community through innovation, continuous improvement, and our commitment to excellence. Let's not be afraid to dream big. One day, we may outgrow this 500-person school building and picture a future where, who knows, our township could grow to 60,000 people. That concludes my remarks on behalf of the trustees. God bless each and every one of you. Oh, as Ruthie, come on up. All right, as Ruthie comes up, uh, Ruthie Brestel Bowen Reed, she was also in a class of 64 like me. By the way, the best coal rain graduating class. <laughs> There's some other guys from 64 here. I plan at y'all, obvious. Ruthie's uncle was Perry Brestel. He was actually a judge. So we asked Ruthie to come back and actually place symbolically the 2023 cornerstone. And as they do that, the band's gonna play our alma mater. So Ruthie, before you guys start here, Jacob, Ruthie, go ahead and, there it is. All right. Ruthie, just stay up here for a minute. Okay, Jacob, this is the alma mater. Okay, uh, real quick, hey, Dan Huss, 
Hey, Dan, stand up again. The uh, origins of the alma mater, a fellow named Ken Jones, who used to be band director, a uh, music teacher named June Crabtree, Dan Huss and his brother helped write the alma mater way back in the mid 1950s. Well, they, helped, they got it together. I mean, that's close enough. They got it together. The fight, the fight song, the first time, we don't know really when the fight song started. We know it first made its appearance in the 1942 yearbook. Whether or not they hit it before then or not, we don't know. Okay? Thanks, Dan. Okay. We got one, we have um, the Coleraine Elementary and Coleraine Middle School. If you kids want to come on down, Melissa and Melody. They're going to sing two songs. When you look through that original program, they couldn't do some of those songs they did. But a lot of those songs are very patriotic, very pro-public education. Are you going to sing from back there? Are you going to sing from back there or come up here? OK. They're going to come up here. They're going to sing two songs, America and It's a Grand Old Flag. And then Colin Clymer is going to come up. And we have a video tribute to all these people from the 20s and 30s. So hopefully we'll be done here in about oh, eight, nine, ten minutes or so. So these are, this is Melissa Matiska. She's the director of the elementary. They're the ones here in the white going over this direction. And Melody Smith is coming down here with the middle school kids. <laughs>
Daryl, you want to come on up? We have uh, three more things. Daryl is playing the role of a fellow from the State Department of Education. Then we're going to do the benediction with Joanne. Don't leave after the benediction, even though it's, quote, the last thing. We have a four-minute um, tribute to the many veterans from Coleraine High School, which I think you will all enjoy, okay? we got three more things. Here's Colin Clymer. So from the State Department of Education's perspective, it is wonderful to be here to be a part of such a momentous occasion where a community is coming together to represent the cornerstone for a new building. The crowd is amazing today. It looks like there could be 4,000 people here. In Ohio, our public school system, our system of common public schools, is currently a system of one school room, one school, one room schoolhouses that are represented by districts, very small districts. And we have all of our kids in that one room schoolhouse. But as things progress and communities grow, as this community has, with railway, railway systems and roadways, the progress and development of that meets the need of the educational system. And the system evolves and changes. And you guys are representing that progressive movement of consolidating from one-room schoolhouses to a consolidated school, where students are now going to experience an educational system where they are in classrooms with their grade-level peers and not with an entire 12-grade system. This progress that you're making represents the vibrancy of this community. And as communities grow, schools grow. And it is wonderful to see this community come together. As I walk and go through the state of Ohio, you are trailblazing as a community. And I am sure that you will continue to trailblaze for the next 100 years. Thank you. Okay. Joanne, you want to come on up? Uh, again, she's going to do the benediction because they, they did a benediction back in 1923. That is the second last thing. The last thing is a four minute, um, before we start this, I'll say a few more words. So Joanne is, um, go ahead. All right, will you join me in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we ask now for your almighty hand to be upon our community as we, the committee, and all the families present today celebrate this grand milestone. May they find comfort from our community. Please continue to embrace and support us as we journey through life. We thank you for all who graduated from our school with wisdom, friendship, and skills. You continue to challenge us. You make this world a better place, and because of our education, we will continue to serve you and our community. Lord, bless us and keep us. Keep us peace this day and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we have one more thing. So this is ready to go now. In 1943, uh, during the middle of the Second World War, October 1943, they had another ceremony out here, and they have um, uh, erected a very big plaque with the name of all the men and women who were in the armed services during the Second World War, okay? We thought, since a lot of the pictures of these early classes and graduates, uh, many of those people ended up serving in the armed services. Four of them were killed in the Second World War. Uh, in Vietnam, there were six kids from killed from Vietnam, or from Coleraine. So we thought a way to end all this is kind of a tribute to all those early families. Um, and on that original plaque, the names are all kind of just put on, it's like 160 names. We just recopied the names and alphabetized them. So when you're looking at this, like if you're a Dissler or so on, you can find out where the Distlers are, where the Hearths are, where the Husses are, and so on. So it's easier to see. So Greg, you want to go ahead? It takes about four minutes to go through it.
That concludes our program. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you all for coming, and go Cardinals!